Hello there! In this video I'm going to talk about thumbnailing but this time I'm going to record through the camera so you can see me doing the thumbnailing instead of just doing screen recording. In the meantime I'm going to also provide in the corner a recording of the screen so you can see in both modes and I'm also hoping that by recording through the camera it would it would make things a little bit more easy to digest or kind of like really see things from different perspective maybe that helps. And I'll be using Affinity. To say the least, Affinity is far better than Photoshop in terms of pricing, but for God's sake, they have plenty of brushes by default. So uh, I'm gonna come up with a prompt, maybe more, but I'm just gonna make it as simple as possible and short and sweet. Let's say my prompt is going to be a firefighting robot. First things first, if you are holding the pen like this, you are in the ideation and concepting phase because you want to have that overview of what you're doing and you're just kind of roughly and loosely doing the work because as soon as you think about details when you are in the ideation phase that's a fail if you hold the pen or pencil like this then you are in the advanced mode which means details and sketching and that is the phase when you know exactly what you're sketching and you're just making details and if you hold the pen like this in the ideation phase that's a fail so ideation detailing so know the difference each one is good at the right time okay so it's very important for the um, thumbnailing process to stay loose it's also very important to not be afraid of making mistakes. Third, don't care about erasing. How to hold the pen or pencil. And finally, thumbnail. Remember this. So here's my thumb. I do not want to exceed this. In fact, even this is large. So. I would say I want to stick to something like this, even smaller, like, you know, think of it as a challenging case. Because in many cases I see students like making thumbnails like this big, and then you end up like you're kind of painting the wall as far as really detailing what you're working on. And it's just a lot of work. Instead, just work this way. And like any little gestures that comes from the brush or the pen, is pretty much all you need to really emphasize certain kind of uh, design aspect of what you're wor working on so something like this scale as far as the volume when it comes to brushes it's very important to pick something that you you're comfortable with um, oftentimes a plain brush is all you need however if you choose a kind of a creative brush, sometimes it sort of helps you on thinking of something that is not necessarily on your mind. Same as the concept of looking at the clouds and imagining certain things. Um, you kind of like, oh, it looks like a sheep, I don't know, a dragon. So uh, if you feel kind of like dry in terms of your imagination and you just want to have something to stir the pot, just pick some wacky brush, do some work with it it would introduce to you new shapes that huh you know what i think i can work on this as such and such form so it sort of helps you in getting out of the kind of zone you are in if you're looking for a refuge I'm kind of painting in large scale just so you can see the difference between those brushes and uh, their irregularities And in advanced stages, you can also do symmetry. I, I really enjoy working with symmetry. And you might have seen on my channel, I have a, a whole bunch of one minute robot. So I really like to use this as a challenge for myself where I would make a robot within one minute uh, just to kind of push the boundaries and see what I can make with a uh, range of uh, time and speed. Uh, and of course, this looks like a robot that missed legs day. So let's bulk it up a little bit. And of course, the proportions are pretty horrible. Eraser is actually pretty effective. You're just 
carving away the things that you don't like. And you can sort of do that same practice there. So this is a, a lot longer than one minute, So, and I, I actually hate it. But the goal is to introduce that challenge for yourself. It's pretty fun. And the best thing about it is that it's just in one minute. So you can never be unsatisfied with the result because who can who can make a robot in one minute? If you can do it, that's pretty impressive. If you cannot do it, then it's it's designed to fail, right? So you have that kind of anxiety out of the window. It's like, if you can do it, you're amazing. If you cannot do it, then you're a human, <laughs> right? So, yeah. Um, so this is... This is kind of a large-scale thumbnailing, just for the for the sake of really showing you uh, uh, in details what I'm working with. And of course, this is leveraging the symmetry. You can go back and check my one-minute robots. It, it's a whole playlist. Uh, but in the meantime, just keep in mind that you're working on a very small uh, scale. So technically, if I were to just kind of go around the size of my thumbnail, as I mentioned, then you can just kind of really imagine how much of a speed difference there could be. Notice how I how little I have to move the pen and the symmetry line to get some result. I don't like how the symmetry line here is. You know what, I'm gonna click lock. Yeah, lock is the way to lock it so I don't have to change it. Good thinking, Affinity team, good job. Very little space here, little changes, and your thumbnail is done. And of course you kind of make it solid so it would just Look like that. Okay, so those are mainly the the main things that I think about when it comes to to thumbnailing. Now let me go to the to the meat of what I was hoping to to get to, which is firefighting robot. A good start normally. I'm gonna turn off the symmetry so it would be normal, and uh, hopefully whatever I introduce here can be applied on a piece of paper or even if you wanna draw it on your actual nail if you must. So in many cases, starting with a um, the horizon line is kind of useful because it just kills away the anxiety of like, where's my robot? Is it flying? And you can even start with the feet if you want. Um, so that could help a little bit, right? And this is just kind of sketchy lines and much larger scale than what I would going to draw but just so you can see with that size so uh, as you can see it it was really easy for me to go in reverse knowing that this is where the floor is and it's very important to keep your robot balanced okay so now that i have that horizon line i'm gonna make um, the target size for me is this way this much just to keep it really simple so uh firefighting robot so as far as I imagine this, it's a robot that can do firefighting fighting, uh, or assist in firefighting. So primarily it's going to be focused, uh, focused on maybe being able to um, have firefighting liquids and uh, some tools. Um, yeah, so I also want it to be quick. So I'm going to give it two wheels at least in, in the first one. So the first... The first kind of uh, seed for starting with the thumbnail is that I should know what I'm doing the thumbnailing of. Yes, you can do randomly, perfectly fine, but as far as doing ideation and thumbnailing for ideation, the ideation comes first and then the thumbnail comes later. So that's why I'm thinking firefighting robot. So I'll start with the body and then um, if there's nothing specific in my mind, I'm just kind of bulking out the body. And then I want it to be agile. I want it to move really quickly and easily. And I want it to kind of maneuver quite easily as well. So maybe I'll think of two big tires here. And I want it to be able to hold a whole bulk of kind of water in the back, maybe or liquids in the back, so maybe I would just draw that as a line. And um, remember rule number two, I don't care if I'm doing okay. I just stop and move on. And sometimes it takes me some time to get warmed up. So I'll also start with, in this case here, with one wheel. And I'm gonna make it pretty bulky. 
and like I mentioned, Agile. It's very important to keep in mind that you are in the silhouette form or mode. You're just discovering the form of what you're building. You're not think if you're thinking about details, you're just not doing it right. As far as the thumbnailing process. Maybe I'll make it this way so these two ends here. Just clarify. These two ends could be for scanning maybe. I don't know. And hands would be very useful. And just having one wheel would be useful as well for speed. I could also make it that it would be on like multiple legs like a spider if you must and be filled with a liquid whatever the liquid uh, that liquid is going to help with i also want to think about hoses so i could think of a larger robot humanoid or on bipeds and then I could have I could think of those hoses as like this way they can fill up on the tank and maybe can have like a head like that that would just be looking around if I hate it I just continue I don't care to erase it I don't care to not name it whatsoever uh, and the other thing is everything that I'm doing is gonna build up towards the other things so um, yeah so here's the shift so I can make a straight line for that horizon and now I'm gonna make them even smaller and notice how I'll be able to just these are gonna be good kind of filler for my imagination for the next ones so I'll be potentially repeating some of those shapes just temporarily since I'm not happy with any of them but just kind of um, on the same on being on the same track and uh, they're going to be very helpful because they're going to give me so, some ideas where I could make some gestural drawings here and there that could be connected to what's in here so um, it's all good here's a bulky one and every once in a while it's important to just do something that is kind of crazy meaning that and, and this is where you either it's a hit and miss but when you when you hit it's pretty pretty awesome and here's a hose here's a hose right and now um, the fact that this is equipped with such large feet it's going to allow it to be fast and agile right and because it's not really bulky it's just large in the volume um, it it's not going to be heavy just the metal itself or the materials itself meaning that it can still hold a um, good amount of liquids I'm going to name this fire fighting 
cowboy. Looks like a cowboy and here it's going to be drawing water from or liquids from the thighs and also from the back tank. Now this is where the the artist could go to the extent of like oh maybe I'll give it a hat or something like that purely for aesthetic but I'm not going to do that because this is supposed to be potentially a nice looking practical design of a firefighter. So I shouldn't be obsessed with the aesthetic of what a cowboy is. But in the meantime, what I can do is uh, create a star, for instance, and put that star, the sheriff star, on the body in a way that it sort of like connects to that, to that aesthetic. This is the worst star ever for cowboy. So yeah, this is, this is like as far as what I wanted to go with. This is a good start. I could either continue with this one and elaborate on it or I could just go and on and on and on and make 50 or 100 thumbnail and uh, just just as a reminder that you know high number of thumbnails the higher you go the much better result you get always um, the thing is the first few ideas we go through they tend to be from movies we've seen or games we've seen um, so it's not always a good idea to trust that they're good enough and uh, just put them test them out and see what um, what you can do uh, further by just drawing more and kind of in a way dry out your imagination and re kind of um, recalibrate it or um, Rebring the juice into, into your thoughts as you just kind of maybe listen to music. Music is very important for everything, pretty much. Handwriting is also important for me. Yeah, so um, the other thing you can do, this is where you kind of start to break away from where you're starting. It's like, oh, maybe it's a kind of a robot that... Uh, and notice how I'm drawing them all in front view. But just to kind of elaborate on the idea is like, notice if it's like a robot that is actually connected to a kind of a tank like that. And then I can make it like, like a spider. This is gonna be a kind of a practical way of doing that approach because this is plenty of liquids and you can think of it you can th benefit from the design of like ants or benefit from the design of beetles in a way that you kind of you come you learn from nature and we all we always do uh, and you're kind of like um, leveraging the idea of the tank while connecting it to the head or the, the main body that could be a robot and you can also detach them so this is where you kind of go from just one piece to a two piece robot in a way. That's also a potential. Anyways. So yeah, uh, I can keep going on and on and uh, explore the same ideas or explore new ideas, elaborate on the old ideas, uh, mix them with new ideas and uh, uh, it's very important to kind of really figure out what makes you uh, more creative. Um, sometimes watching a movie specifically that I've seen before, where I don't have to pay attention to, but I really like the aesthetic, the music, and whatsoever. Here's a wacky robot upside down kind of connected this way now um, this could potentially those feet for instance would be help helping that robot to go over the fire oh my god the whole building is on fire and then there's a huge tank right it would go over it and then so that could be another concept where I can just kind of really elaborate on 
So here are the feet and make that overall volume more kind of massive. And the tank doesn't have to be huge. And this is where I can go to the extent of making an aesthetic appeal for that robot in a way that is triangulated, giving it some mysterious feel and go into more feet. Right, so it almost looks like a monster that is looking down at that building that is on fire. And then Godzilla is gonna come in here and like, what are you doing? I'm setting this city on fire. No, you're not. Ah, pew, pew. Anyways, so um, I, I kind of like this design before Godzilla came in and ruined my life. Uh, I kind of like this idea because it has that uh, kind of a aggressive appeal, but kind of a, that aggression that is used for good, which is basically killing fire. So that's good. Uh, I also like the cowboy idea. So if you're interested, what I can do is I can take these two and just elaborate on them and take them to the iterative design. Um, and um, if you also like that result, then what I can do is I can pre-visualize those robots, um, collaging them with images and uh, hopefully create something that is um, educational and entertaining. So yeah, uh, let, let me call this um, C as in cowboy. And this one here is the mysterious firefighter. If you like to vote for C or M, let me know which one you like more, or if you want B for both of them. <laughs> Anyhow, I hope this was helpful in any way. Thank you.